What is going on guys, Casual Savage here and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create a time lapse like Casey Neistat. Now just before I get into this video, if you'd like to request a tutorial then let me know in the comments below or on Twitter. Okay so this is from one of his recent vlogs where he is in Sydney and let's just play through this. So as you can see basically he keeps it at a normal speed and then when the music drops and after his text, boom, everything speeds up. And there's also something very important to do when you are recording a time lapse. Okay so as you can see I am currently recording the, the time lapse, I just have the camera facing out of the window and there we go, it's been on for 3 minutes so far and an important thing if you are using a DSLR for this, as you'll see on my lens. I've set it to manual focus and that's what you need to do as well. Also on top, I've set it to manual so that means I control the ISO and different things like that. If you have it on autofocus then the time lapse will come out very weird when you do it. Okay so I have my music and I have my raw recording and as you can see it was 18 minutes. Of course it's very long, I'm just going to shorten this down. So we can remove the audio of course and of course it starts off normal so let's just keep it at a normal speed for a bit and then at five seconds maybe or six seconds we can make the music drop so that's where i've put an m on my keyboard and it lays down a marker and i'm also going to press s on my keyboard to split the clip so now we have two different pieces of clips now the first thing we're going to do is add in the text maybe one second and then now we need to right click, insert a video track, and this is where our first piece of text is going to be. So head over to Media Generators. If you don't see it, you can come to View Windows Layout and select Default Layout. From Media Generators, come down and you want to look for Legacy Text, and you want to pick one with no background. Now Casey just adds on default text, so we're just going to drag and drop this one. And he doesn't edit in Tony Vegas, I actually believe he edits in Final Cut Pro. Okay, so just so simply, just because this is for... Uh, Casey, let's put New York since that's where he lives and we'll put this all the way up. So we need to size where the, literally the edges of the text are literally touching the edge of the screen because that's how he does it. So we just got to keep uh, going through and find a size. So like that will do and now we can head over to effects and we can add an outline because of course white on white we can't really see it. So let's just add an outline and we'll add a black outline here. We'll turn the feather off and we'll put the width up a bit. Now notice it looks a bit distort, that's because this is it's a preview and auto if I set it to best and full, as you can see the text looks better. Now you'll notice he also doesn't keep his text on screen that long, so let's play through. That's really long enough, for like a second. So I'm going to just trim this clip down, so it lasts a second, and now this is what we have. New York, and it just goes off screen like that. Then a second later, we can add on the next piece of text. So I'm going to press M on my keyboard to lay down a marker, and this lets me know where the next piece of text needs to be. Now, I also forgot to mention, underneath the place where he's at, he also adds the date. So let's right-click and insert another video track. And, of course, the date doesn't come up straight away, so he shows the place, and then a few, a few frames after, that's when the date comes up. So we're going to add on the exact same default text again. And let's put the date on recording, which is September 20th, 2016. So like that, and then we have to size it down again until it literally fills up the entire screen. Okay, so we'll have it like that, and let's choose the effect and add an outline again. We'll add a black one so we can see it, and we'll bring the outline up a bit. And there we go. Now we need to size it down so it ends at the exact same time as this text. And we also need to position it. So we can come to the event pan and crop and then just use the arrow keys and position it underneath. And of course it's not centered or it may look a bit off is because we haven't actually put the New York text up either. So we'll do that now. So this would probably be about here and we can X out of it and come into the New York text using the event pan and crop. We need to make your sync cursor is unchecked. Come across the timeline, make sure you're right at the start on the frame and just simply 
put it up like that. So now it looks centered. We can X out of this. So now this is what we have. Just like that. The next part is where he puts his name and then he puts the episode. So we're going to do the exact same steps again. Of course, on the first track, it's going to be his name, all in capitals, which is KC Neistat. And again, we need to fill the entire screen up for this. So maybe a uh, 80. There we go. Again, come over to effects. We'll draw an outline at a black outline, turn the feather off and put the width up a tiny bit like that. And before we actually add on the next piece of text, I'm actually going to position it now. So vent panel crop and we're going to make it come up a bit. There we go. And we can X out of this and now add on the default text on top. And of course, this is where the date is going to be or the episode number. So it's usually like episode 165 because the example I showed you of what he done was that episode. And now we have to size this down. Again, this is going to be much smaller now because there's more text to it. So we'll just have to keep playing around with the numbers here. 35 seems good. And we'll add on our outline again. Turn the feather off and put the width up a tiny bit like so. And use the event pattern crop to position this text underneath, just like that. Now, when he shows this part, both the texts appear at the same time. It's not like this one where he shows a place and then the date pops up. It shows his name and the episode at the same time. Again, we'll keep this on for the same amount of time we kept this on, which is about a second. So four seconds, maybe like there. And we'll just trim everything down to here. So let's play through what we just done. And then this is where the beat's going to drop. So now we get into the actual time lapse. So first of all, we need to come to the end of your clip, hold control and drag it all the way in. This is going to speed it up. So if I just put this to auto, it's moving, but very slowly. The next thing we're going to do to make it faster, we're going to right click. We're going to select insert, remove envelope and select velocity. We're going to drag this bar all the way up. Now I need to turn this down to preview and auto and let's play through. Now it is faster once again, but it's not fast enough. So this requires us to render this out and then drag it back in to make it even faster. So we're going to render it out and I'm going to call this speed one. Now, of course, KC does edit in Final Cut Pro. To be honest, I've never had any experience in Final Cut Pro, so I'm not too sure if it's easier to do it in that or his camera itself. It probably records in time lapse. OK, so as you can see, it is done. We can just let close. And now this clip right here, we're going to delete it. The rendered one, as we called it, speed one, we're just going to drag, drop it on and we're going to do the exact same steps again. Hold control and drag it all the way in. And we're also going to right click the video, select properties, disable resample and uncheck maintain aspect ratio. This will get rid of any ghosting and it's vital to do on a time lapse because of course we're going to be speeding things up. Again, we can right click and remove the audio track for now and let's just play through it. As you can see, it goes much faster just like that. And of course, again, we can make it even faster. If we right click and select insert, remove envelope, velocity, drag this all the way up. Let's play this. Now it's going to be a bit laggy because we did put 300% up and of course it's already sped up. So let's play through from the beginning what we've done. So of course, nice, normal, slow, no movement, beat and drop, boom. It's going to go super fast like that. And of course, the final thing we need to do is add some music. Now, Casey always uses some good music. I've tried to find some music that's uh, sort of like Casey's and this is what I found. So we need to find where it actually drops. So right there. So we're going to press S on our keyboard, delete this, everything on the left, and we're going to drag this and match it up with the drop. Now we're just going to drag to the left. And as you can see, it comes up like that. So as soon as it drops, it's going to be speeding up. And we can also come here, put S on our keyboard and delete this. So let's play through what we've just done. And that is how simple it is to create a time lapse like Casey. And as you can see, it does take a bit more time in Sony Vegas. He uses Final Cut Pro, like I said, and of course his camera is close to $2,000. So of course he probably uses the time lapse feature. But anyway, like I mentioned at the start of the video, if you'd like to request a tutorial, 
then let me know in the comments below or on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has helped you. Please subscribe, rate, and peace.